Next question is from Wife of the Tree Yogi. Are food intolerances self-induced or not? Yeah, that's the million-dollar question. Yeah, right? Yeah, so... More often than not, I would think. Interesting question. Yeah, so, I mean, food intolerances, like, what causes them? So, one thing that might cause them is you have inflammation in the gut, the... The junctions between the, I guess, the cells that line the gut. Because remember, the gut really isn't in your body. So think of it this way. Think of like a donut, right? The hole inside the donut isn't in the donut. It's actually on the outside of the donut. Uh, The donut just surrounds the hole. So when you eat food, it goes through the body. Think of it that way. It's not in your body until it's absorbed. And what allows it to absorb or come into the body are, it's very complicated, but the wall of the gut and the intestines allows things to move through. Well, if it's inflamed particles can go through when they're not supposed to. And over time, your body might recognize these particles as foreign invaders develop kind of an immune response. And blingo, blingo, you have an immune <laughs> response to food that you eat all the time. So that's one you know common popular explanation. You also could have food intolerances because of SIBO, uh, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. You could have a histamine intolerance as a result of it. So now you're eating foods that are high in histamine like bone broth, for example, which is supposed to be good for your gut, but all of a sudden it's causing right. problems. So I would say probably a lot of it is uh, self-induced. But then there's ones that we just, you know, I, don't, I mean, could you consider, well, what, I, mean, I guess well, lactose like, intolerance. Like being born with allergies. Yeah. Right? Well, like I was going to say, what, yeah, what about things, what, do you guys subscribe to the idea that like epigenetics are playing a, a huge role here? So let's right. say like- What's expressed. I, I mean, I definitely think there's things where if your family came from the Mediterranean and there's generations and generations of eating certain types of foods, mm-hmm. your body is just, uh, and you've, that's been passed down from your dad. It just agrees with a lot of that food. And then when you go outside of that, I I think that I see, at least in my experience with clients, like when they go outside of those things that their, their families have been eating for generations on generations, I feel like they're, you're more likely to be intolerant to those. I feel like some people are more susceptible to it than others in terms of like having that kind of genetic predisposition. Like there may be something underlying there, but uh, a lot of times some people like they don't really get to the point where they, they feel the consequences. the, The clearest example of that is lactose intolerance. So if you look at like Northern Europeans. Yeah, right. And and African-Americans is extremely high too. Right. So if you look at Northern Europeans, they have a very high tolerance tolerance, for for lactose, right? the opposite. Yeah. And it's because they've been drinking milk probably for thousands of years, longer than most places, right? As you go further south in Europe, you start to see lactose intolerance go up. Mm -hmm. Um, In Africa, you see uh, lots of lactose intolerance, except for certain areas. Yeah, certain tribes that that drink milk like crazy. Oh, yeah. There's there's regions of Africa where they have yeah. tremendously good <laughs> lactose tolerance. Uh, so that's a good example of how our genes kind of uh, you know play a role in how we tend to tolerate food. Now, here's the challenge with that, Adam, is especially nowadays and especially in Western countries, very rarely will you find someone whose lineage is so like one area. Like right. my family's all from from southern Italy. So it's easy for me to be like, oh, okay, Mediterranean. Right. But most people are like, yeah, my, I have a little bit of, yeah. Yeah. you know, Swedish. I have a little bit of this and a little bit of that in me. And yeah, so I'm then a it's- total mutt. So I think you really just kind of test it out for yourself and see how you feel. But that's the clearest one. That's the, that's the one that's most studied where we can see clearly, oh, people from this area tend to have, you know, 20% of them are lactose intolerant, whereas people from here, 5% or whatever. Yeah. 